Okay, my AP Biology students, today we're going to talk about mutation, or how one gets to join Xavier's School for the Gifted. You have to understand something about mutation. Uh, it generally has a connotation of being bad, but mutation is a fundamental, as fundamental aspect of the process of evolution. Without changes to DNA, changes don't happen to organisms. So let's track that a little bit. Whenever DNA changes, which is what a mutation is, it's an alteration in the DNA sequence, what that does <clears throat> is that alters a polypeptide sequence, whether it be a structural polypeptide, an amino acid, I mean a um, enzyme, po enzymatic polypeptide. Change in DNA results in a change in polypeptide sequence. Well, since the polypeptide sequence is the primary level of protein structure, and since the polypeptide sequence determines all other levels of protein structure, what that means is that changes in DNA, which are changes in polypeptide structure, I mean in sequences, are changes in polypeptide structure. Change DNA, you change the structure of a polypeptide. Well, if you change a polypeptide's structure, you change a polypeptide's function. So if you change DNA, you've changed the function of a polypeptide, which you should be well aware at this point that structure equals function. So that means that mutation, changes in DNA, alter the structure of polypeptides, which can change their function. And those can alter the structural components of an organism. They can alter the enzymatic components of an organism. They can order communication components of an organism. And those alterations can not only be bad, they can be good. Because those alterations give natural selection something to act upon. All right? So you have to understand that when we think about mutation, it's a little bit like rolling the dice. Sometimes you're going to come up with the best result. Sometimes you're going to come up with the worst result. But if you don't keep rolling, you're never going to come up with the good result. Mutation is necessary. Without mutation, evolution does not occur. Think about it. Your DNA polymerase, the enzyme that's responsible for replicating your DNA, it makes a mistake on purpose. One every one billion base pairs. You sexually reproduce as an organism so that you can combine your genetics with someone else's because you need variety. We go through the process of crossing over during meiosis because we need variety. All of those things carry risk. And if that risk did not have a huge reward, it would not have been selected for. All right. So mutation is risky, but it's necessary for living things. All right. So there's always going to be this fine balance between it happening when it needs to, but not happening when it doesn't. And that's part of the reason that your DNA polymerase makes alterations only one every one billion base pairs. But then there's other sections of your DNA. We call them hypervariability regions, where that frequency of mutation is actually lower. A good example is your immune system, because it needs to be able to adapt to an ever-changing pathogen environment. But let's talk a little bit about some of the ways that uh, we insulate our uh, protein structure from mutation. All right. Uh, obviously, DNA polymerase makes mistakes infrequently. But then you also have to think about the codon structure. There's 20 amino acids that are used to build your polypeptides. Your DNA contains the information to sequence those 20 in the right order to assemble them into a chain. But your DNA has 64 ways to say which of the 20 amino acids it is. There's a lot of duplication there. And that duplication actually causes something that we call silent mutations. All right. Silent mutations are when the change in one of the codons actually leads to the same amino acid. Since there's no change in polypeptide structure, there's no change in function. And we call that a silent mutation. It's a change with no result. There's also something, uh, your tRNA molecules have a little piece at the end, uh, the last nucleotide in the uh, <coughs> anticodon, and that little piece doesn't bind to the codon quite as strong as the other two, and so we call that wobble, <coughs> which means that you could actually have the wrong anticodon there, or wrong nucleotide there, and it doesn't usually make a difference. Um, you'll also see that that third base tends to be less important. Think about the... Um, anticodon chart. You use it to decode DNA into proteins. Uh, you'll see they come in groups where it's almost 
the first two are unique and the last one is the same. First two unique, last ones, or the last one is different. The last one doesn't really matter as often when determining which amino acid it is. All right. So those are two ways that we can sort of account for mutations to make sure that they don't happen too frequently. <clears throat> but we do still want them to happen, and sometimes they get through those changes. So we need to talk a little bit about how that happens and why. All right. So fundamental thing here, you cannot forget this. DNA will change the structure of a protein. So if you change your DNA, you can change the structure of a protein. So the first thing that happens is something that we call a missense mutation, where a change in nucleotide causes incorrect amino acid sequence. All right. So take a look here. Here you've got uh, parental DNA go through the process of replication, and you'll see the red highlighted T has been altered. It should have been a CG, and here the T has been misplaced. Yes, it doesn't fit right, but sometimes that still gets by. So when that DNA is replicated, the correction is made, and instead of being TG, which doesn't structurally fit properly, it becomes TA like it should be. Well, when you go through the process of transcription and translation, this leads to two amino acids, cysteine and tyrosine. But if you look over here, at the one that's correct, it's supposed to be cysteine and cysteine. So that single amino acid change is caused, is caused as what we call a missense mutation. Now, missense mutations, um, they can destroy a protein and they can destroy a cell, but they also could be a mutation that is good or irrelevant. All right. They are the most common type, and they are the types of mutation that lead to the process of evolution. Because sometimes switching just that one amino acid, or over millions of years, switching one, then switching another one, then switching another one, can lead to a structural change in an organism that benefits it. Okay. Now, we also have what's called nonsense mutations. Nonsense mutations generally are when a change in a base, all right, so you can see it here, uh, instead of being uh, UGC, it becomes UGA, all right? And that UGA becomes a stop codon. Well, now what was this long polypeptide sequence is now stopped. And that uh, causes a non-functional protein because it shortens the protein strand. Large sunk sections of it no longer are coded. And that generally uh, is a bad type of mutation, okay? We also have what are called frame shift mutations. Now, frame shift mutations tend to happen mostly uh, when things are damaged or changed on the chromosomal level during crossing over, uh, non disjunction during meiosis. Okay. So, what happens here is you can see up top you've got this amino acid sequence histidine, serine, histidine, valine, leucine, methine, leucine, or methionine, leucine, right? <clears throat> now, what you'll see is here it's CAT, that's where the reading frame begins. Well, with a frame shift, the reading frame is messed up. So instead of being part of this sequence, the C is part of like a promoter region or it's part of an intron or something bad happens to it, so it gets removed. Well, now the reading frame is all off by one letter. So what was histidine now becomes isoleucine. Serine becomes histidine. Histidine becomes threonine. Valine becomes tyrosine. Leucine becomes serine. Methionine becomes cysteine. And leucine becomes tyrosine. So you basically, by changing the reading frame with one point shift, by removing that C, you've created an entire new protein structure. These are almost always, without fail, highly destructive. In fact, frequently if a frame shift mutation happens, uh, the cell will be destroyed. And if this happens in like um, development of embryo, this could be the kind of thing that leads to um, miscarriage. Okay, So, missense mutations are mutations that occur and those are frequently what, what are the small changes that alter polypeptide sequences, structures, and functions that lead to changes in evolution. Nonsense mutations tend to make non-functional proteins that occasionally can lead to diseases, but mostly just lead to a screwed up protein that gets recycled. Um, frame shift mutations, those are real dangerous, and they frequently result in cell death, uh, so they don't tend not to get carried on. Okay. Now, 
<clears throat> we've talked a lot about the mutations and what happens and how they happen, but what we haven't talked about is what causes them. Uh, obviously, we, we have mentioned a little bit DNA polymerase uh, is built in to make mistakes every once in a while. We've got hypervariability regions, uh, codon wobble, the uh, multiple uh, codons that account for the same amino acid. There's lots of place, things in place to account for mutation, to allow it to happen. Uh, don't forget um, crossing over is meant to occasionally in, uh, induce mutation or even the recombination of genes that you get with um, sexual reproduction. But what causes mutation outside of that? Well, first off, there's natural mutation. We've, we've mentioned a bunch of that stuff, okay? Now, there's also mutagens. Now, <clears throat> mutagens are physical things from the environment that can cause mutations, all right? Um, and sometimes those mutations are like point mutations, but sometimes, and we've got an example over here, something called a thymine dimer. Uh, they could actually cause physical changes in the DNA structure itself. And this is actually a big reason why um, going out in the sun without suntan lotion is a big problem. What you've got here is the ultraviolet light has provided energy that causes a chemical reaction, and it's actually caused sections of two adjacent thymines to double bond. Well, that double bond is way stronger than the hydrogen bond that holds the thymine to the adenine. And so what you've got here is this little bubble in DNA. Well, when DNA polymerase goes to transcribe this one strand, the one with the di thymine dimer is not going to be transcribable. But then <clears throat> the other side, or even you can't really replicate it right, and on the other side of it, that adenine, because there's, there's, um, there's you know, the, the thymine's there, it can be misbound to a numerous number of structures. So this potentially could be a big disaster. All right. And again, x-rays can do this. That's why the x-ray technician leaves when you get an x-ray. I mean, obviously, it's not going to hurt you, but if she does it all day long, it'll hurt her or him. Uh, ultraviolet light, it's why you're not supposed to spend a lot of time outside, and, and all kinds of chemicals we're concerned with. Uh, lots of things that we don't want to drink or eat, or if you're in a chemical lab, that you're not supposed to inhale deeply or spend too much time with because they can change your DNA. And as you've learned, changes in DNA lead to changes in polypeptide structure. Changes in polypeptide structure lead to changes in function. And mutation can be bad. Or good.